Here's another exam style question on magnetism. The diagram below shows an apparatus set up by a student. So we can see here we have two different magnets and between them in the empty space there's a wire. Closing the switch creates a force that acts on the wire XY. So here's the first question. Explain why a force acts on the wire XY when the switch is closed. Okay, let's take a look at what's exactly happening here. Now, between the two magnets, we're going to have a magnetic field. And remember, this always points from the North Pole to the South Pole. If I close the switch down here, that means now we can have a current flowing through the circuit. This red arrow represents the flow of the current between the points X and Y. Now remember, when you have a current flowing through a wire, that is going to create a magnetic field. Remember, this is because of electromagnetism. So now we have two magnetic fields, one between the two magnets, and the second one, the magnetic field of the wire. When these two magnetic fields interact, that is going to create a force on the wire. So, explain why a force acts on the wire XY when the switch is closed. Okay, number one, closing the switch creates a current in the wire. That's one mark. The current creates a magnetic field. Second mark, which interacts with the magnetic field of the permanent magnet. Third mark, easy three marks. Okay, next part. The force causes the wire to move. Draw an arrow on the diagram to show the direction in which the wire XY will move. So to do that, we're going to have to again look at this in more detail. Now, whenever you have a diagram like this, first of all, you want to look at your battery. The long side is always the positive side and the shorter side is the negative side. The current always flows from plus round back to the minus side. But we're just going to focus on this part because this is the part that's going to move. So we're going to use Fleming's left hand rule and I'll show you how we do this. Fleming's left hand rule will tell us which way the wire will move. The first finger always points from north to south pole. The middle finger points from the positive towards the negative pole of the current. Once these two are aligned, then we can look at the thumb and that will tell us the motion or the direction of the force. So let's see how we can use the left hand rule to answer this question. Now remember, I want to make sure that the first finger points from north to south, which is the green arrow, and the middle finger points along the red arrow, which is the current. So we need to move the hand a little bit, and perfect. So the middle finger is pointing in the same direction that the current is going, and the first finger is also pointing from north to south. Now we can look at the thumb. The thumb is pointing upwards, meaning that the force on the wire is upwards. Perfect. State the effect that this experiment demonstrates. So whenever you have a wire that moves because it's inside the magnetic field, this is called the motor effect. Okay, next part. The student replaced the battery with a low frequency AC power supply. The student closed the switch, described the movement of the wire and give a reason for your answer. Okay, so the battery down here is a DC power supply. However, we're going to change that with an AC, also known as an alternating current. So when we close the switch, we're going to have a flow of current just like before. However, because it's an AC, that means the direction of the current will change. So for example, right now it's pointing towards the right. However, now it's towards the left and back towards the right. So what effect will this have on our wire? Well, let's say if it's pointing towards the right like before, we said that the force is going to point upwards. So the wire will move up. However, if the current now decides to point in this direction, that means that the wire will move downwards. And up and down. So to describe the movement of the wire, we're going to say that the wire will move up and down. And to give a reason, the force is continually changing direction. There we go, simple as that. Okay, here's another exam style question on magnetism. Some people wear magnetic bracelets to relieve pain. 
In this figure, we can see a magnetic bracelet and poles A and B have been identified. However, we want to know if those are north poles or south poles, or is one of them north and one of them south. Now remember, whenever you have a magnet, the magnetic fields always point away from the north pole and into the south pole. Based on this, let's look at A first. We can see that those arrows, which are representing magnetic fields, are pointing away. So that means A must be a north pole. Now looking at B, again we can see the arrows are pointing away. So B is also another north pole. Figure 2 shows the lines of the magnetic field pattern of a current carrying wire. So in the middle we have a wire, there's a current flowing through it, and those circles are magnetic field lines. If the direction of the current is reversed in the wire, what happens to the direction of the magnetic field? So if the current is reversed, then the magnetic field will also turn in the opposite direction. Nice. Part C. Fleming's left-hand rule can be used to identify the direction of a force carrying on a current. Okay, complete the labels in figure 3. So figure 3 is a left hand. So the first finger points in the direction of the magnetic field. That's one mark. And the second finger points in the direction of the current. That's another mark. We can see the thumb is always pointing in the direction of the force. Okay, so here we have two different magnets. Between them we have a wire. And we want to know which way the wire will move. So we can see that the magnetic field is pointing from north to south in this direction. And the wire has a current flowing through it. There's a small arrow in the wire as well. And although that's not visible, it's showing us that the current is flowing from plus to minus upwards or in this direction. Okay, so we're going to use our left hand rule to figure out which way the wire will move. We're going to turn it slowly and then now we can see that the first finger is pointing from north to south and the second finger or the middle finger is pointing upwards. Now we can look at the thumb. The thumb is pointing away from us. So that means that the wire will go into the paper. So just three changes that will decrease the force acting on the wire. Okay, one is to decrease the current in the wire. The second one is to use a weaker magnetic field. Now you can do this by either using weaker magnets or you can use the same magnets and move them further away from each other. Then the magnetic field becomes weaker. And the third one is to rotate the magnets so they are no longer perpendicular to the wire. So if you look here, we can see that the magnet and the wire is perpendicular. There's a 90 degrees angle between the field and the wire. When it's perpendicular, we have maximum force. However, if we turn the wire or the magnets such that they are no longer 90 degrees, then the force acting on the wire reduces. So remember, perpendicular, always maximum force. Not perpendicular, weaker force. Okay, part D. Here we have a diagram of a moving coil ammeter. The ammeter consists of a coil placed in a uniform magnetic field. So the question is, the equipment has not been set up correctly. What change would make it work? Okay, let's have a look here. We can see that right now we have two magnets. However, in both magnets, the south poles are closer together. That means, since south poles love to take in the magnetic field, all we're going to get is this. We want a magnetic field to go from one magnet to another one. So, how about changing the direction of the one on the left? Now, the north pole is pointing inwards, and that means that the magnetic field will go from north to south like this. So now, if you place the coil inside it, and we apply a current to the coil, then we can have the motor effect, which means the coil will move. Of course, if we put more current, it'll move even more. So the answer is, change it by reversing one of the magnets. Perfect. The reason it's one magnet, if you reverse both of them, then again you have the same problem. You have two north poles pointing inwards. Okay, part D. Okay, here's the final part. Figure 6 shows the pointer in an ammeter when there is no current. What type of error does the ammeter have? Since there's no current, the coil should not move, and therefore the ammeter should read zero. However, it looks like it's already a little bit above zero. This is an example of a systematic or zero error. 
systematic or zero errors will affect all of the results. It's almost like saying having a weighing scale and not placing it at zero, starting at five kilograms. Then jumping on and crying about it because you're five kilograms extra than you thought. All you have to do is just rotate it so that it's back to zero and then you can get your readings. Hey guys, if that video helped you, support our channel by liking, subscribing and sharing it with your friends. And more importantly, if you still have questions, drop a post on our forum at examqa.com where I will personally be there to help answer your questions. Mohammed signing out.